नमस्कार एंड अ वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरीवन आई एम मुक्ता कांडियाल एंड यू आर वाचिंग आर स्पेशल लाइव इंटरैक्टिव सेशन ऑफ सब्जेक्ट सोशल साइंस एंड द टॉपिक वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टुडे इज वर्किंग ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशंस पार्ट वन एंड द सेशन वी आर हैविंग टुडे इज फॉर क्लास नाइन स्टूडेंट सो यू कैन वॉच आर दिस प्रोग्राम ऑन पी एम विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन सो इफ यू हैव एन इक्वेरीज एन इक्वेशन रिलेटेड टू डेज सेशन यू कैन कॉल एस ऑन अर नंबर दैट इज एट एट जीरो जीरो फोर फोर जीरो फाइव फाइव नाइन यू कैन ऑल्सो राइट टू अस एट डी टी एच डॉट क्लास नाइन एट द रेट सी आई टी dot nic dot in and the topic i just told you is working of institution part 1 and to discuss it in thorough manner we have a uh, expert today in the studio let me introduce her to all of you so the expert we are having today in the studio is dr wanthang pui khobung uh, ma'am is from dess uh, nie and crt uh, good evening ma'am and a very warm welcome in the session good evening mamta Okay, so ma'am, this as I told you, the topic is for working of institutions part one. So ma'am, what is what all are we going to discuss today? What all institution are we going to discuss today in today's session? Okay, hmm. um, a very good uh, afternoon once again. Um, uh, today's session will be you know a kind of continuation of the different sessions that was taken up hmm. on democratic politics uh, hmm. uh, part one, that is hmm. uh, textbook for class nine. and in this uh, pl same platform only many mm. themes have been cover about democracy the why and how of democracy mm. and constitution why and how how it was you know mm. uh, prepared and drafted mm. and then one aspect of democratic politics that is electoral polit politics was also cover before mm -hmm. and in this session i would like to discuss this uh, working of institutions if we may recall you know whatever that uh, was already discussed mm. uh, the feature of democracy it was already discussed um, uh, in two sessions and in that uh, one of the basic features of democracy it is uh, to do with you know decision making by elected leader mm -hmm. but in here uh, one thing that is very important like in uh, democratic setup is uh, elected leaders they cannot uh, take decisions on their own they have to follow rules and regulations they are bounded by certain rules and regulations and they have to work with and within institution mm -hmm. so in this session we are going to discuss on this institutions okay, okay. ma'am and then um if yeah i just want to give an overview of uh, this um the topic. session yeah. yeah the session and what we we, we may be discuss even in the you know uh, next session also here um the working of institution if we look at you know uh, the concept of institution it may uh, look like it is a very simple you know concept mm -hmm. but then um, this um, institution when we are uh putting or applying in a polity and we are seeing in that you, in, you know context mm -hmm. then um the meaning it become more complex mm -hmm. so in order to understand this the concept of institution clearly mm -hmm. and then how it works in a democratic setup like us mm -hmm. uh i will be uh, showing uh, we will be discussing it uh, by taking one example um before we um, go on to that example i just want to you know um give a brief overview of uh, this topic because uh institution in democratic society as i said it is very important and how major decisions are taken how it is implemented and how disputes you know are resolved in the society mm -hmm. uh, this aspect it plays a very important role so when we are discussing that one uh, through example by looking into by studying this office memorandum this uh, uh, notice uh, uh, issued by government of india long back then we will be able to understand how major decisions are taken implemented and how disputes relating in you know democratic setup are uh resolve so by doing this we will be able to you know understand how institutions together carry on the work of government uh, the most prominent institutions in democratic setup uh, we can see in this the three uh, theme uh, that is um, legislative um, executive and judiciary and when we examine this office memorandum we will be able to find out that these different institutions are in one way or another uh, involved in this decision making process okay. 
So this is what we are going to uh, discuss. And then I just want to um, uh, start with this, how major decisions are taken in a democratic setup. Okay. So, uh, Mamda, if you can uh, have a look at this uh, office memorandum. Of course, ma'am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at that, mm -hmm. do you think that, you know, the person who is signing mm -hmm. at, Joint the, Secretary, yeah, it's mentioned. at the bottom, mm -hmm. uh, do you think that she is the one taking all the decisions? Uh, Ma'am, I think what my opinion says, uh, I think it would be no because as you said in the starting of the session only because you know to take a decision, to implement, a, to execute a decision, it takes a lot of uh, decision making, a lot of time, a lot of uh, people are involved. So I think the answer would be no, the person who have signed this memorandum, I don't think so that would be the sole decision of that person. Okay, mm. uh, exactly. Mm. Uh, so then like uh, who is involved in this you know in who or what institutions are involved hmm. in the culmination of this kind of a very important notice hmm. by the uh, government of india now uh, this notice is about uh, reservation uh, hmm. it was uh, issued long back uh, hmm. in 1990 and the this notice it has a lot of you know uh, events behind it that led to the issuing of this notice so uh, we can broadly you know uh, guessed like even uh, you had also said yes, you know like uh, it could not be the decision of one person mm. so we could both broadly guess that you know uh, major decision like this mm. uh, it would have involved so many, you know, um, Other bodies officials, well. yes, so many functionaries. Mm. So we can only say that this order is, you know, the culmination of so many events that had taken place uh, much before mm. this uh, one, uh, it came uh, into the picture, okay. So let us take its root. Uh, let us trace the root of this, you know, of his memorandum mm. so that uh, we will be able to find out or we will be able to understand what institution is exactly in the democratic setup and how they are working and what kind of role they are playing. So the first event that I would like to uh, discuss in this context is uh, Second Backward Class Commission of 1979. Now, uh, this is also known as Mandal Commission um, and uh, it is also officially known as Socially and um, Educationally Backward uh, Classes Commission. It was set up in 1979 and the objective of this the objective of uh, this commission was to identify the socially or economically, uh, educationally backward classes of India and also to consider their reservation as a means to address you know, inequality and discrimination in our country. Now, uh, this uh, particular issue, it is very much contested upon also that we know. Mm -hmm. But then uh, a democratic society or a government or a setup that is based on democracy it is very important or the basic uh, foundation of democracy is to, to promote equality so even our, the constitution had also talked about you know uh, making provisions for this socially and educationally uh, backward classes so in accordance with in order to you know fulfill this kind of you know obligation and what uh, is already there in the constitution. This kind of initiative, uh, it was uh, taken up by the government in 1979. And then this same commission uh, that was you know, constituted in 1979, they had submitted their report in 1980. In 1980, the report was submitted. And then in that report, uh, they had given a lot of recommendations and some of the major recommendations are this reservation of this 27% public sector and government job. And then um, government are also to ask, you know, uh, government is also to make necessary legal provision relating to this. If you look at the other side, on the right side of the screen, you will see, you know, this uh, Mandal Commission report. And uh, in this context, you know, like um, even uh, the viewer, uh, students, uh, you can uh, uh, take up an activity, like you can find out about, you know, the first backward uh, classes commission, because as the name indicates, it is the second one. So uh, just to expand your idea and knowledge about this, you can uh, look into this um, 
you can find out the first backward class commission, then you can write a brief report on this. Now, after the report was submitted, um, there were a lot of discussions. And this, the one that I saw, that is showed in the slide just now, it is a transcript of uh, what uh, was discussed in the uh, parliament relating to this report. Mm -hmm. okay. So it was uh, discussed in the parliament also and then after this also many parliamentarians and many representatives they keep on insisting on the implementation of this recommendation. And till 1989 however uh, it could not be implemented, it was not implemented. But then in 1989, uh, when this Lok Sabha election took place, um, Janata Dal, they took up the issue and then they put it as part of their manifestos. As we all know, political parties are a very important institutions in the democratic setup because they bring awareness, they channel ideas and opinions of the public, uh, you know, in a more democratic and systematic way. So they had promised to implement the Mandal Commission report if they are voted to power. These are the different, you know, uh, newspaper reports, you know, that uh, shows that uh, uh, that talks about that is related with this uh, uh, election, and then they indeed came to power. They were voted to power. They form a government, and when they came to power and form a government, uh, in different platform. The promise that they had already met, they started slowly, you know, uh, working on this uh, through different institutions and platform. And the president had announced the intention of the government to implement these uh, suggestions in the parliament also. And then, you know, after a long discussion, this uh, formal decisions, it was taken by the cabinet. And then it was announced, the decisions to implement this the recommendation was announced by the Prime Minister in the Parliament. And then the order was drafted and then uh, it was issued by the concern department as uh, we had, I had already shown in the beginning. The aftermath of this, you know, um, office memorandum, it was not a very pleasant sight mm -hmm. because uh, there were a lot of uh, disputes, there were a lot of, you know, uh, protestation and there were a lot of counter uh, uh, protests uh, relating to this. Mm -hmm. And then so many um, cases were filed and then many people were having different opinion relating to this. Mm -hmm. And some feel that, you know, some, they felt that it is unfair because this will deny, this would deny equality of opportunity who did not belong to this, uh, you know, uh, group, uh, even if they are qualified. So it became a very disputed issues and some felt that, you know, this is a long, you know, um, due uh, process that needs to be uh, uh, followed up and that needs to be implemented because, uh, as a democratic country, we need to look into this aspect also. We need to, you know, uh, bring every section of people in the society to the forefront. So a lot of, you know, um, disputes, it, take, it takes place and then it was hardly debated also. And all these opposition cases, uh, so many cases were filed, and all these opposition cases that were, were filed against this, you know, order, it was um, bundled up, it was put together, and then the uh, judiciary, the Supreme Court had taken up the issue uh, in the form of this um, uh, Indira Soni and others versus Union of India case. And the Supreme Court um, in 1992, they declared this uh, office order to be valid, but they suggested that it should be modified. And the will of sections of people who belong, who are, uh, you know, supposed to get this kind of benefit should not be included in this. So the uh, notice was modified and in 1993, the uh, Supreme Court ended this dispute and then the policy, it has been followed since then. Now. 
if you you know look and if you look back at the story that I had just sent and the different mm -hmm. event uh, that I had just shared and the different mm -hmm. events you know that had uh, led to the culmination of this office order mm -hmm. we you will be able to find so many institutions mm -hmm. that are involved in that whole uh, different events mm -hmm. one was the president the parliament prime minister and cabinet supreme court political parties parliamentarians committees and civil servants the bureaucrats all these institutions and all these personnel and all these you know officials were involved in uh, those different events now when we you know look into those different events that took place and the uh, you know different uh, process that had uh, gone through in the culmination of this uh, order we can say that institutions it plays a very important role especially in a democratic setup and this is only one of the government activities mm. uh, that uh, we see through this uh, office order but every day in a democratic setup you know government uh, they uh, perform they take up so many activities they are expected or they are required to ensure the security of the nation they are you know uh, expected to provide opportunities for health education mm. and so many other things mm. and all these activities it needs a lot of you know uh, functions from different functionaries and you will see that you know in to carry out all those tasks of the government mm -hmm. you need somebody who will take decisions you need somebody who will implement the decisions and if there is any disputes arouse, arising mm -hmm. Uh, out of anything and we need an institution that you know uh, need to settle the those disputes okay so because of this institutions it is very important and if we are to understand what is institution institution as i said in the beginning uh, institution it may be you know uh, it may sound like a very simple award but then uh, it is a very you know a complex process of this uh, rules and regulations that is there in the society in a simple way we can say that institution are those you know um, set up or, or those set of arrangement uh, that regulates individuals behavior that it, that regulates group behavior on the basis of the established rules and regulations mm -hmm. okay it can be perceived differently in different contexts but if we uh, situate uh, or if we you know uh, put or apply into the context of an organized society then we can say that uh, institution it means two things one it can be a distinct identity that we could see uh, with clear boundaries definitions and legal framework for example parliament election commission court upsc and apart from this also um, uh, when we apply the term institutions in an organized society it can also mean a set of activities that is happening in an informal institution uh, that plays a very important uh, you know position and placed in human society for example you know political parties religion uh, media maybe all these you know their actions and their activities it plays a very important role in the democratic process so when we talk about institution in this context we mean institutions that comes under this uh, you know uh, idea that i had just shared like uh, uh, parliament election commission court upsc which are formal institution and informal institutions also that has a significant presence that has a significant you know place in public places okay so if we look into all this um, different institution uh, we can say that yes uh, we can say that you know uh, political institution uh, we can understand from three um, uh, organs of the uh, organs of the government that is the legislative executive and judiciary that uh, later on uh, we will be looking into it also now uh, 
why these political institutions are uh, very important and why it is needed in uh, you know uh, uh, democracy these different set of institutions it is needed in democracy because when these different set perform or you know when they um, carry out the function that is assigned to them properly then only democratic democracy it works well okay democracy it works well but however uh, working with institution it is not a very simple thing because um, it involves so many rules and regulations and it involves so many meetings commissions routine as it is already evident in all the events that we had discussed that led to the culmination of that office memorandum so sometimes we may think that you know uh, what is the need of all this institution one person can just take a decision but that is not you know the spirit of democracy that goes against the spirit of democracy and uh, institution it makes you know possible for rational decision uh, it institution like you know uh, it may make it impossible to, for a very good decision or a rational decision to be uh, made or taken very quickly but at the same time even you know a bad decision cannot be taken you know in a hurry so in this way it is very beneficial this kind of complications and delays also it is beneficial in the sense that they offer a lot of opportunity for a larger and wider set of people in the society to be consulted in the process of decision making so uh, because of this institutions it is very much important and it is needed in the society now uh, i just want to highlight a few uh, role of institution in the democracy why do we need institution political institution in democracy i'll just highlight this um, institution number one it create channels for participation how does it create a, a channel for participation uh, this term, institution if we see uh, if we look at different institution we see that democratic institution whatever uh, institution that i had already mentioned in a democracy it paved the way for the participation of uh, people in democratic process it enables them to share power for example if you look at uh, election commission as uh, one important institutions uh, in a democratic country like us we can say that you know uh, uh, election commission enable um, the formation of this uh, political party that is they uh, enable and they are you know responsible for allotting uh, for recognizing political parties and they enable they are a body that uh, ensure that you know anybody can form a political party and then uh, like if you look at parliamentary system of government we can say that you know anybody can become a potential representative of people because we have parliamentary system of government as an important institution in our country so uh, it creates a channel for participation and secondly it maintains trust in the functioning of state because um, when rules and regulations are followed and when different institutions are involved then the legitimacy of the government and its working it is you know uh, more clear to the people and also um, it prevent concentration of power because powers are distributed in different locations absolutely. in different absolutely. centers absolutely absolutely ma'am and i think uh, the all the working of institution all the knowledge that you have given in this session are as we know delivered to all the student they get a roughly idea they get a fair idea of how different institutions work uh, we would have loved to continue this session but we are limited by the time ma'am so we will be continuing this uh, working of institution that the topic we chose today in the next uh, sessions uh, once again ma'am thank you so much for joining with us today and delivering this informative session to all our learners and students thank you so much ma'am Thank you. And I would like to thank everyone who joined in with this session throughout. Uh, we will be back with our another session that is webinar. Stay connected to PM Vidya channel and CRT official. Namaskar.